Hey YouTube, I just wanted to do a uh, quick little review here of two different smart helmets that I bought for biking around. Um, and I'm gonna send them both back is the short take. Uh, so if you wanna know why, you can watch the rest of this video. Um, this one on the left here is the Basecamp SF999. And this one on the right here is the Livall uh, BH51MNSO. Um, doesn't say that anywhere here on the box. Uh, there it is, BH51MNSO, um, which is like one of their top of the line smart helmets. Um, this one, the base camp retailed on Amazon for about 90 and I paid, uh, there was a coupon for 15, so I paid 75. This one uh, is marked at 180. Uh, then there was a couple of stacking coupons, so I ended up paying about 135 or something like that. Um, anyway, unfortunately I don't like either one of them, so I'm gonna have to start over with a new search. Um, but what we have here are two almost perfect helmets, um, either of which I'd be happy to own, except for a couple of brief things. So starting with the base camp, um, this one is a helmet that is, uh, these are both bike helmets. They're both uh, certified with various things, CPSC. Uh, neither one of them is the more uh, modern MIPS uh, standard, which is unfortunate. That seems to be an add-on that a lot of bike helmet companies are doing. It should be sort of standard, I think, but. Um, they don't, they don't offer it at all on the, either of these brands, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so they're sort of slick looking bike helmets um, and they have uh, built in lights and built in speakers because when I cruise around the city at night, uh, I sometimes like to listen to music and it was uh, discussed in a forum thread I saw that some people feel it's rude to just use a Bluetooth speaker in your basket the way I've been doing. Um, no one's ever complained to me. I generally am not in writing in huge crowds of people anyway, but I can see how it might be annoying to someone. So I thought I'd try and be considerate and, and uh, get a helmet that the sound comes from inside the helmet. Um, and I don't want to wear earbuds because I do want to be able to hear stuff going around me. Uh, it's, you know, a safety thing. I don't want sound blocked. I just want to add some music. Um, so I also wanted lights. Uh, my e-bike that I've traded to in the last couple of years is pretty well lit up but I wanted some additional lights. And so uh, with that in mind, I went out to find myself a, a MIPS helmet that had lights and sound and was frustrated. So I gave up on MIPS and then I went for lights and sound um, and I'm still frustrated. So this base camp one, I actually like a lot. It's the cheaper of the two. It's a little bit lighter. Um, I mean, this Livo one's not crazy heavy, but it's noticeable. Um, you know, it's a little bit smaller. I'm not sure if that makes a difference or not, if you actually need the helmet part of the helmet. Um, both of them have the sort of same matte black, and it feels like it's going to scuff and scratch pretty easily, which is, you know, a bike helmet is a thing I like to toss around and not think about too much. They're both, um, in terms of fit, I have a pretty big noggin. Uh, I found that this base camp one, even though the helmet itself is smaller, had more room if you have a bigger head than I do. Um, and they both have this, you know pretty standard click lock thing on the back to turn it. Um, neither one of them was a, all that robust. It feels like a part that might break. Um, and this live all one here has got lights uh, on the back and also white lights on the front, which I really like the idea of that I would have full visibility on the helmet and not just rear visibility. Um, you know, this, this one goes all the way around. So that was another selling point. Uh, so I bought the cheaper one first. Um, it comes in this bag, no box at all. It's a kind of robust bag. I'm not sure that I would ever store a helmet in a bag, but I like that they didn't actually package it in a box. Um, and then it also comes with this little case, which feels unnecessary. And then it has this little wristwatch looking thing that attaches to your handlebars and controls uh, volume and, and the blinker feature. Also comes with a very short little USB-C cable, but it is USB-C. Some of these extra little Velcro things for the interior pads. For some reason, a tiny screwdriver. And an extra battery for this thing, plus the user manual. Um, which is nice. Uh, the reason I'm sending it back is the sound quality for a speaker that advertises itself as being something you can do with sound is 
absolutely atrocious. And um, I will see if I can figure out how to take a video and have sound come out of this since the phone that I'm recording on is also the device that's hooked up to it on Bluetooth. Um, but it's got these little speakers and I read the reviews and I wasn't expecting much, but it's unlistenable. Uh, it sounds like this, this one here is just blown. Uh, it's just static. Um, and they send out a thing saying, oh, you know, we, to everyone who buys this, <laughs> we've gotten complaints about sound quality. Just change the volume settings on this little wristwatch doohickey. Um, it doesn't help. It sounds awful. And I'm paying for a, a helmet that's supposed to sound good. So that's kind of a bummer. Because otherwise I actually like this helmet a good bit, even though it's sort of bare bones and doesn't have the front lights and doesn't have MIPS. Um, if, the, if the speakers were just listenable, I don't mean good, just tolerable, I would keep it. Um, but they're not. So what can you do? So I have it hooked up to Bluetooth and I tried to play music through it and it stopped the video. Let's see if I can make that. Turn like beware. Turn like beware. Turn like beware. Turn like beware. Turn left beware. Turn left beware. Turn left beware. So that's it. Um, it does make that sound to tell you that the blinkers are on, which I, I kind of appreciate that just because just otherwise you wouldn't know they're in the back of your head. Um, and it's, it's nice and bright. The lights are good. Uh, don't remember how to turn on this rear light. Let's see. There's a couple little buttons here. Um, that's the power button. The USB-C cable charger input is right there. It's not, there's no protection from water of any kind. Let's see, what's that one do? Mm, nothing. All right, so. Um, that's, that is that one. This one, I'm sending back. Um, I, I got it. I liked it. I wore it out for one ride. I rode it to a club, uh, see a band play. Um, brought it inside. Actually, coat checked it because it's a $180 helmet. I didn't want to leave it outside on the street like I normally would. You can see the speakers here. These are sound by JBL. They actually sound decent. They sound like I wanted the other one too. I mean, it's still tiny little speakers hanging out over your ears, but it's clear and it's listenable and the volume control is good. It has more different safety things. You say it's a little bit heavier. Um, the little knob on the back is a little bit more robust. Um, and overall, I kind of like this one. Um, I, th I thought it was good, although I note that like this mat, just one use, it's already starting to get scuffs and stuff like that. Uh, and it wasn't a very Power robust on. use. So when I turn this one on, it does this power on thing and says connecting. It has an app for your phone, which the other one does not. Um, it will no longer connect after one use. It worked once. We got things connected. Oh, is it working now? Now it's beeping. That's more than I could get it to do before. So it has its own little version of the wristwatch doohickey. Oh, that didn't work. Yep, so this is why I'm sending this one back. Uh, I can't get this thing to work again. I can't get it to stay connected to Bluetooth. I can't get the app to work. I can't, uh, I've uninstalled the app, reinstalled the app, got this thing going. Um, you know what, it's a bike helmet. I don't want to spend this much time with connection issues. And when I want to go somewhere, I want to put my helmet on and go somewhere and not fiddle. So unfortunately, even though it seems like a pretty quality helmet, the, the tech integration piece is just a fail. So I'm sending this one back too, um, which is a shame uh, because it's a pretty nice helmet. This one comes in this slip box and it has a bag too, but it's more of a disposable side kind of bag. Um, it has this little wristwatch thing, but it also has the app. And I took some video of me trying to fut <laughs> in futility to make the app reconnect, so I'll probably upload that. You can listen to it while I'm jabbering here. The other thing I really dislike about this is it has this proprietary MagSafe style charger, and it goes in here. Um, like that, and it works, and I charged it overnight. 
but I have 8 million USB-C chargers and I don't want a proprietary charger. I would like to be able to charge it at my destination if my battery starts to go dead. Um, maybe you can see the front lights blinking. Another thing I did not like about this one is that there's no all is on feature. Uh, the lights are, there's a variety of blink patterns you can set in the app if you can get it to stay connected. But there's no just stay lit up. Um, the turn signals are pretty good because they're a different color and it is very evident that you're turning. But the, you know, you can't just have the lights on. Maybe, maybe you're somewhere dark and you just want to use them to light your way. Um, there's no ability to keep them always on. So that was another thing. Uh, and then again, you can sort of see it's, it's already after one use, it's sort of picking up scratches and scuffs. So it's, it looks slick now, but it's not gonna stay looking slick after, after very long. It's got this. And then the lights themselves, I found to be quite underwhelming. Let's see if I can get this thing. It's motion activated somehow. Um, let's get these things to, to light up again, but they are not, very bright at all, which, you know, the whole point of this is to be safe and be visible. Oh, there we go. It's, it's mad at me about something. What did I do? I don't know why it's beeping at me, but it does not like whatever I did. Um, so, beep, beep, beep. So this is my experience with this one is random beeping noises, disconnect problems. The back lights are a little better. The front lights are really underwhelming. Um, easily scuffed and scratched. Kind of too bad, because it seemed like a pretty solid helmet, and I hope that the manufacturer sees videos like this one and takes that into account and makes some improvements, because I would definitely give it another try if it had a, a connection system that worked and some lights that made sense and, you know, bright enough and could stay on all the time. And then, you know, USB-C instead of a weird proprietary MagSafe charger. Um, and this one, I would absolutely buy again if they came out with a version where the speakers just sounded good. Although I would prefer if they had front lights on it. Um, but as far as like a, a sort of budget smart helmet at you know less than half the price of this other one, um, I would absolutely, uh, absolutely buy this one again as long as it Sound quality was just listenable. Doesn't have to be great. Doesn't have to be sound by JBL, but just better. Um, let's say the other thing I didn't love about this, there's no app at all, which is great. It's one less thing to fiddle with, but it only has this one wristwatch thing. And if you break that or lose it, well, then you can't control your helmet at all. Um, so you kind of do want an app, uh, especially if you ride multiple bikes. It's nice not to have to remember to take this thing off your one bike and bring it with you. And again, if you break it or lose it, um, you know, if it falls off your bike, you hit a pothole, something like that. Uh, it's nice that you can still use the features of your helmet without it. So um, there we go. A not very quick review of two helmets that I'm sending back.
Hm?